Okay, question number eight. We have this graph here. And they haven't told us the algebra, maybe because the algebra is too complicated, but they have told us that this um, area of maximum height has a y coordinate of 4, and this area of maximum depth has a y coordinate of negative 2. Um, and so they want us to transform this graph if there was a 2 out there. Well, the 2 is outside the brackets. Oh, and by the way, the basic change, I'm going to graph this by transformation. What does a 2 do? It's 2 times fx. Timesing indicates a stretch. It's outside the brackets, so it's logical and vertical, so it's a vertical stretch. So, um, so negative three comma four, one comma negative negative two. So that's the original graph. Guys, when you're copying out a graph, try and um, mimic the original shape. If that was a maximum turning point on the original, it needs to be a maximum turning point on my copy. That y-intercept was lower than the origin there, so it should be lo uh, lower on my copy. Not really clear whether that's an asymptote or not. Um, Okay, so now I'm going to transform points on this. I've only got two points. I'm going to add that one just to be safe. Um, maybe that one. And that one. Okay, so I said it was going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of two. That goes there. That goes there. That's currently at a height of four. Oh, sorry, that was a height of five. It needs to be a height of ten. It was a height of four. Now it's a height of eight. Current height. Current depth 2, new depth, negative 4. Current depth 1, new depth 2. And now, mimicking the original shape. We connect these new crosses. Oh, I should have done that one, that was pretty easy. That would go there. Okay, so that's y equals 2fx. Now, what about y equals negative fx? Well, the simple placement of a dash is a reflection or a flip. Um, and it's outside the bracket, so it's logical and vertical. There's no such thing as an illogical flip, but the vertical is important. I take this fat black dot and make a circle on the other side of the y-axis. Notice that my pen is moving vertically, that's why I call this a vertical flip. That goes there, that goes... Oh, I made a mistake. That is supposed to have a y coordinate of 4, but I've drawn it with a y coordinate of 5. Sorry about that. Oh, it should have been... It should have been there. Sorry. Ah, uh, sorry. Um, anyway, I'll continue with my circles. If I reflected the correct one, it'd be down there. Anyway, that's not. So this is what I'm drawing here. I'm going to have to be careful to make that a local maximum now, since it was a local minimum before. What I'm saying is don't just shoot up there. You need to retain the basic features of the graphs. So that graph there is y equals negative fx. Sorry again for the mess. Question number nine. On his first birthday, John was given five pounds by his uncle Fred. On his each succeeding, succeeding birthday, Uncle Fred gave him a sum of money that was three pounds more than before. Now with a sequence question, there's no excuse. Even if you're not given the proper details in number form, there's no excuse for not writing out the first couple of terms of the sequence.
just to get yourself in the groove. Now, question one is how much did he give him on his eighth birthday? Well, I'm not going to use a fancy formula for that. I'm just going to count up. Not everything needs to be done with a fancy formula. There we go. There's the eighth birthday. 26 pounds. Now, on what birthday did the gift from Uncle Fred result in the total sum given on Earth all birthdays exceeding 90? Well, I think I can do that by brute force as well. I don't need a formula for that. Current sum, 13, 26, 40, 57, 77, Hundred. So there we go, the seven. You don't need a fancy formula for everything. But if you did want to use a fancy formula, you've got one for the, one of these, because that minus that is the same as that minus that, which means it's an arithmetic sequence, which means the sum is given by this formula here, which for us is n over 2 times 2 times 5 is 10, plus n minus 1 times 3, that difference is 3, um, which simplifies to this. And we are interested in that figure being 90. Being greater than 90. Okay. Now, um, what I might do actually is just solve it equal to 90. Um, normally I recommend solving quadratic inequalities with a graph. Uh, but because this is about a concrete situation, and I have a good sense of what counts as a lot of money for a little kid. I'm fairly confident that I can solve this inequality just with common sense. So what I'm going to do, oh, by the way, it's a quadratic inequality because that'll be n times n, which is n squared. I'm going to find out when it's equal to 90. Now, it won't be equal to 90. I already know it goes straight from 100 to 126. But let's just see. So this is me multiplying both sides by 2. This is me expanding the bracket. Um, and that's quadratic. I can solve it by factorizing, by completing the square, or by quadratic formula. Can I factorize this? Uh, well, 180 has a fair few ways to split it up. I'm going to be systematic about that by just prime factorizing it. That's 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. I just did that as there's an 18. And there's a 10. The reason why I'm doing this, this is an example of the prime factorization strategy, is that I'm just trying to be systematic about ways that I can achieve a product of 180. And I multiply out a double bracket. Now, I'm going to use the Miss McKeever method here. Basically, what she says is split this up so that it, it came from somewhere like 3n plus 4n or 107n minus 100n. But of all the ways you can split it up, try and split it up in such a way product of the two terms you create is the same as the product of these. So I'm going to throw an extra 3 in there, because what I prime factorized there is 3 times 180. So can I achieve that product with some numbers that add up to give 7n? Well, let's pick amongst them. Just copying that out again for means. My two products need to be reasonably close together to each other so that when they subtract, they give 7. I could have, let's say that, that, and that. That would be 2 times 3 times 3, that's 18. And that's... 2 times 3 times 5, which is 30. They don't differ by 7. So let's try that, 
between that and that. That's 12. And that's 45. That undifferent by 7. Was <coughs> so there we go. That's 20, and it's 27. There we go. So 3n squared plus 27n minus 20n minus 180 equals 0. Now you factorize that as two pairs. So factorize this first pair. That's 3n, n plus 9. Factorize the second pair. That's 20, n plus 9 equals 0. I see something twice, write it once. Open up a bracket like what it used to be with, and there we go. So the answer is n equals negative 9, or n equals 20 over 3, which is um, 6 and 2 thirds. The negative 9 is ridiculous. You can't have negative number of years. And you can have 6 and 2 thirds a year, but if we're being asked for on what birthday, well, if it takes six and two thirds years to get to 190, six years will take you under 90, and seven years will take you above 90. So there we go. Uh, it's his seventh birthday that gets him above the the um, total. Now, just two takeaways from this. First of all. We, we had the just do it strategy. Not everything done needs, no, needs to be done with a crafty pattern. But also this prime factorization strategy. Very useful for numbers that are enormous. If you use the quadratic formula on this, you get a very enormous number under the square root. Um, you can also, um, so you know, you get an enormous number under a square root. Prime factorizing it will make it clearer what the... Um, square root is. Um, I'll show you why. If you prime factorize that, you get 2 to the power of um, 2 bad example, 2048. I think that's 2 to the power of 10. No, it's not. I shouldn't have changed it. 1,024. Square root of that. Um, well, 1,024 is 2 to the power of 10. So therefore, um, what number do you need to multiply it by itself to get 1,024? 2 to the power of 5. 2 to the power of 5 times 2 to the power of 5 is 2 to the power of 10. Therefore, the square root of 1,024 is 2 to the power of 5, which is 32. This is just an illustration of how prime factorizing large numbers can give you insights.